Toronto's the only franchise among all 30 NBA teams not allowing a full capacity crowd, and now they're allowing zero fans, so they'll have little to no home court advantage, assumably for the rest of the season, given the questionable history of their government's management of the virus. However, we're going to look at how the Raptors have the voices and talent in their locker room to overcome this drastic change of scenery in their home arena, led by an evolved floor general in Fred Van Vliet, and a wing trio of OG Ananobi Pascal Siakam and the rookie Scotty Barnes, plus a flurry of dogs in the Raptor rotation. Here's how the Raptors face improbable adversity with their government stabbing them in the back for a second straight season, and why they're built to overcome it. Before continuing, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. We'll get to the Raptors attack between the lines in a few minutes, but right now, what's going on off the court in the province Toronto is located in has been a non-basketball piece of misfortune that the Raptors will have to deal with yet again. Disregarded, essentially shunned by their government for a second straight year, last season it was the Raptors being exiled from even competing in their home city, being forced to play in Tampa Bay, Florida for all 36 of their 2021 home games. It was the first time the franchise missed the playoffs since 2013, and now the Raptors are being dealt yet another piece of adversity. After starting the season with 20,000 roaring fans, after Omicron hit, capacity was cut in half a few weeks ago, and now there'll be exactly zero Raptor supporters in their home building. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the players are wondering, what's next? Are we about to be forced out of the country again? Because COVID's not going anywhere, it's not going to just vanish, and the 29 other teams located in places on the same side of the hemisphere as them have more than realized that. This capacity limit in Ontario is apparently only going to last for a period of three weeks, so Canada is really going into full March 2020 run away and pretend COVID will disappear mode. A vaccine passport was implemented inside Scotiabank Arena, like many sports venues across the US have also adopted. Hopefully those mandates can be lifted soon in the US. But considering the vaccine lessens the significance of the Omicron virus, personally I don't think having a vaccine passport mandate is too bad of a decision for a certain period of time. However, this mandate, which was implemented by Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, the Raptor owners, wasn't taken into account in this decision by the Ontario government to cut capacity to zero. Not 10k, zero. Many other workplaces across the province apparently have vaccine passport mandates as well, which makes this decision even more questionable. According to CTV, which is one of the top Canadian news stations, the head doctor north of the border, Kieran Moore, misled and continues to mislead the public about hospitalizations. The mayor of Brampton, Ontario, Patrick Brown, told CTV News on Wednesday that he's heard from a number of physicians that COVID-19 hospitalization numbers don't paint an accurate picture of the current situation in the province because, in Ontario, anyone who's being treated in hospital who then tests positive for COVID-19 is added to the government's count of patients hospitalized with COVID-19, regardless of whether that's why they're receiving treatment. While some of that included my personal standpoint, which you're more than welcome to respond to in the comments section, most of the reason I brought that up is because those twisted politics mean that the one NBA organization based north of the border in the Toronto Raptors could likely play in front of an empty Scotiabank Arena for the rest of 2021-22. But at least we can watch them on TV with our loved ones, and they were able to beat the Clippers without Scotty Barnes in their opener without fans, but as time wears on, not having the advantage of the whistle or the sixth man in the stands to get them through the rough moments could be a bit of a challenge to handle. But despite the overwhelming adversity both the Raptors and an entire nation of basketball fans face at the moment, I truly believe the leadership of Fred Van Vliet, who carries the team with his voice, constant energy, and shot creation, is about to put the six on his back. And Steady Freddy's already started his run of beastly play. As last night against the banged up LA Clippers, the Raps were missing a crucial piece themselves in Scotty Barnes, but Van Vliet carried the squad and sealed the W down the stretch like the future first time All-Star he's about to be. Fred does everything for the Raptors and that was exemplified in his beastly stat sheet stuffing in front of the gloomy empty seats at Scotiabank Arena. He dropped 31 points, made four three-pointers while posting nine assists, two steals, and a block. 
While many players need the roar of the crowd to get them going at home, Steady FVV doesn't need too much noise to get him going, and as he displayed in his first game back in nearly two weeks, he's self-motivated to get the job done. He's got elite guard skills, but similarly to his former running mate in the backcourt, Kyle Lowry, Fred's also an elite hustle player. Fred ranks third in the NBA, coincidentally right behind his teammate Gary Trent Jr. in total deflections. Van Vliet also ranks number six league-wide in total loose balls recovered. But we expected that all-out hustle from Van Vliet, but generally his improvement this year in 21-22 has been pretty shocking. Fred's always been good at extending for layups over taller defenders around him, but his first step seems to be much quicker this year. It seems Van Vliet put in a ton of work on the agility ladder as he's blowing by his matchup with relative ease and at will. Fred's outing against the Clippers was both his, OG Ananobi's, and a few other Raptor players return from protocol. Once the rookie Scotty Barnes returns from knee tendonitis, the Raps will be fully healthy for one of the only times this season. Like the improvement of Fred's foot speed, Pascal Siakam's steady improvement throughout this season at securing rebounds has been very noticeable. The 6'9", 230 pound Raptor power forward is doing a much more fundamentally sound job at finding bodies, pinning them before blasting up for vicious rebounds, whether he's all alone down there or in traffic. Spice racked up a season most and also a career best in beastly 19 rebounds to go along with 25 points, 7 dimes, 2 blocks, and 2 steals while making half of his attempts from both the field and from deep. Moving on to one of the most reputable wing defenders in all of basketball, OG Ananobi, who's an absolute menace in the passing lanes, and his return in the six displayed exactly that. The product of Indiana University was anticipating passes like he was in mid-season form, even though he's barely played over the last two months. Versus LA, Ananobi had four momentum swaying steals, which crucially gave Toronto possession, and also gave them transition opportunities when the Raps needed them most. Given those three combined for a dominant 82 points, and they were missing another 16 along with elite defense from their soon-to-be Rookie of the Year Scotty Barnes, here's what makes the Raptors potentially a problem for second-tier teams in the Eastern Conference. Obviously, you have the Bulls, Nets, Bucks, and Heat in a class of their own, but aside from those teams, Toronto currently is within three games of everyone in their conference. Considering Toronto can get a seemingly easy 100 points combined on any given night from the big four of Fred, OG, Pascal, and Scott, that makes it tough to game plan for other talented options slash role players on the roster whose scoring can help you win games as well. For example, the NBA's league leader in steals per game, Gary Trent Jr., might be streaky offensively, but he had 44 and a game winner last season. He's put up as many as 31 in 21-22 and is currently averaging 17 points on 7 three-point attempts per game, knocking down 38% of those deep-range bombs. GTJ, along with Svi Mihailuk and Utah Watanabe, have all been efficient three-point marksmen as well, so once we see this team at full strength for a long stretch of time, all those weapons could win Toronto a bunch of games, given those aforementioned players continue to avoid injury, of course. I want to know your take, though. Will the Raptors overcome this adversity of not having home fans or crumble in an empty Scotiabank? Best answer gets next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shoutout goes to Boston Haltane, who says something that isn't much mentioned about Golden State is the culture that the Warriors possess. The strength in numbers is the Dubs motto, but when you think of teams with great cultures, it's easy to think about teams like the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs, among others, but the Warriors culture has been a big part of their success they had in the mid-2010s and how the team is playing right now. Amazing take from Boston. Pause to read the rest of it and my honorable mentions. Hope you all have a great one. D-Flow signing off.